to be lost among the thirteen million pillars of grass. This honey is delicious, though it burns the throat. Oh, hi, I'm Scott Alexander. I just have to get my mind right. Thank you for joining me, and today, we're going to start making reeds from gouge-shaped and profiled cane. Let's all make bassoon reeds that do not suck or take all day. Let's all spend a fortune on expensive reed equipment. We don't really need to play and make our reeds sound nice. I have to get my wires ready in advance. We don't need to soak our cane very long. I like to soak reed in, in warm water just while I'm sort of getting ready. That's plenty of time. We're only going to use two wires in this stage of the process. Eventually our, our reeds will have three wires. I've always been told to use 22 gauge brass wire by several different uh, reed makers. I've been told that, the, that that is important. I, I don't know. I've seen some cheap reeds and some expensive reeds made with different material and different gauge wires. I just haven't found it a, a variable that's worth messing with. What I like to do is I like to pull the wire a little bit with my pliers to make it, uh, makes the wire a little bit stronger and easier to work with. And I cut pieces that are about three and a half inches. And I'm gonna cut a few more pieces than I need, uh, just in case if I mess up putting on a wire, I've got a, another one there ready for me right away. Ouch, don't cut me. So the first step, we're gonna to wanna to score the cane. We don't want the cane to, to crack too much as we're forming the tube. So we just hold it steady against some kind of surface um, that's not gonna break the cane, that has the sort of same curvature on the inside. Some people will use a dowel rod, other people will buy a easel from a reed supply store that's a dowel rod that costs a little bit more money. I just use a piece of tube cane uh, as something to hold the reed on. I take a straight edge razor blade, I go up to the point where the, the shape of the, of the reed is its narrowest, so about right here. And I simply put a little bit of pressure so that I cut through that top layer of bark. And I just score across the reed. More scores are better than deeper scores. Score. Mm, yeah. Just slide that blade. Score that cane up. Um, and we, of course, do that to the other side. There's pretty much no such thing as overscoring your reed. Some people will, like, do crisscross scoring. I just, I, I don't know. I haven't found it useful. The next thing we need to do is find the absolute center of the cane. Sometimes when we buy gouge-shaped and profiled cane, there'll be a line in the center that you can see really clearly. In this case, there's not. So if I measure this piece of cane, it's a pretty common length. It's exactly 120 millimeters in length. Um, it's fairly common, but that can vary um, by a couple millimeters. So half of 120 is 60. So I'm going to mark the cane at exactly 60 millimeters. Uh, just with a pencil here. I'm going to put a little marking right here. And I'm going to do that on the other side. So what's going to help us uh, fold our cane over a lot better, I'm just going to take a small triangle file. I'm going to file a line across here. I don't need to file too much. Uh, it kind of depends on how thick your, your cane is because uh, you don't want it to, to break, but you want it to be enough to make it easier to fold over. This is a really important step. Uh, we're about to fold our cane over, and the goal is to have the two ends meet exactly. And that's not always the easiest thing to do. Um, I take a straight edge, which is actually just my uh, metal ruler here. And I've been soaking this cane for just a few minutes while I've, was, I've been getting ready. I've been soaking it in warm water. It doesn't need to soak longer than that. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it just below the line that I drew because some of that is, the line is going to end up in the top of the fold. All right, and I'm just going to grab the end and bring it down, okay? 
And as I get close, I'm going to start looking. I haven't like tightened this fold here. I'm going to look and uh, look, it turns out I'm not perfect. In fact, I'm pretty far off that these, these two points are not meeting up. So I'm just going to kind of manipulate the cane here to get that to happen. I'm going to get them nice and flush. Now I'm just going to pinch it down, essentially, just like that. This is really important. It's really important this, that this matches up. And if you have to sort of uh, squash your cane here, it's worth doing. The shape, the, the, both blades, both sides need to be the exact same width. And if this doesn't match up perfectly, then you're going to have one side that's slightly wider than the other. They're not going to taper evenly on both sides. 